In this video, we're going to use moment generating functions to prove that the sample mean and sample variance drawn from a normal distribution are independent. And this is the next video in a playlist I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. We're in Chapter 6, part of this playlist. And let's jump into today's topic. So our one goal is to show, in this Chapter 6, so we have several goals, but this goal for this video is to show the sample mean and variance are independent taken from a normal distribution. So let's set up the definitions. Let x1 through xn be independent normal with mean mu variance sigma squared random variables i.e. a random sample of size n we're going to find the sample mean as the sum of the random variables divided by n the sample variance is going to be defined like this and notice that we're dividing by n minus one so it's the unbiased estimate for the uh, for the variance let's look at the mean of the sample mean so let's take its expected value and then let's write the mean you know x bar and summation notation constants come out front expectation goes in it's a linear operator the mean of a ran each random variable is mu then we're going to add them up in time so we get n mu the n's cancel we're left with mu and so this says that the sample mean is an unbiased for the population mean now let's look at the variance of the sample mean so the variance of the sample mean, we write it in summation notation. The constant comes out squared. The variance goes into x. Notice they're independent, so there's no covariance involved. The variance of each observation is sigma squared. We're adding it up n times. One of the n's cancel, and we're left with sigma squared over n. Now, if you look at this, this you can tell that the sample mean is consistent estimate for the population mean, i.e. the variance asymptotically goes to zero which means you let n go uh, to infinity and this goes to zero. Then that says that the mean of the sample mean, which is the population mean, the variance goes to zero so that you become right onto the population mean. So let's look at the moment generating functions of the sample mean. So we want to find m of x bar, which by definition is whatever that is, you put it uh, expected value of e to the s x bar let's write it in summation notation then since it's the exponents are being added you could write it as the product of these e raised to that exponents since they're independent x1 through xn are independent you can take it as the product of the expected values but you could re rewrite this in product notation but notice this is looks just like a moment generate function for x which is from a normal distribution but instead of s right we have s over n so that's what this is but the moment generate function for a normal is e raised to the mean times that variable sigma squared over 2 and then this variable squared which is what this is and, but it's the product, so you're going to take n times this exponent, and we end up with this. But this is actually the moment generating function for a normal random variable. And since moment generating functions are like a fingerprint to a specific distribution, then we know that x bar is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. Now let's look at the moment generating function of a vector. Now, earlier in this playlist, we look at moment generate functions. We do it for the univariate, and I think we do it for multivariate. And so if, if you need reminded of the multivariate or vector-valued moment generate functions, you can, you can look at an earlier playlist or earlier, earlier video in this playlist. So here we're going to let w be this vector, x1 minus the mean, x2 minus the mean, all the way to xn minus the mean. So let's find this moment generate function which means takes e to the t transpose, or I'm going to call it prime, t prime w. And then th this, these are vectors, so that's a vector product. And if we write these out, we get this here. And then we can add up the exponents, so add the first terms on each of those, and that's what this is. And then take the t1, all those in, and then we can multiply this in. 
And now these steps here, I'm going to go through in a little more detail because we're going to use exactly these steps again in our next derivation. And I'm just going to gloss over them and point you back here. So this n that's divided by the sum of the x's, I'm going to take, take it out and put it for the sum of these ti's, which then that becomes the mean of the ti's. And then we have the sum of the x's. This one just comes down. But I do this because then we can write this under one sum, which we get this. But notice these are normal random variables. And this is so much like a, oh, but we then we take the uh, sum and write it as a product. And then since they're independent, it's the product of the expected values. And we can write that. And these are all little moment generating functions with t1 minus t bar replaced with the you know the the original t1 or the s's so these are just all moment generating functions for that normal random variable and they're all the same so we put in the mean minus this variable sigma squared over 2 this variable squared it's the product so we multiply the exponent times n and when we sum this goes to 0 and then this is, we, we, I said n times it, but it's, we, we're summing the exponents because there's an index. So it's just, it's not n times it. So, so then this, the, the sum ends up being this. But this, if you're familiar with multivariate moment generating functions, this is a multi, moment generating function for the multivariate normal random variable. And so there's no mean here, so it's a zero vector. And then it's sigma squared times some variance covariance matrix. And in this particular case, the diagonal elements are 1 minus 1 over n, and the off-diagonal elements are minus 1 over n. And so I'll let you derive that on your own if you're interested in that. Now let's look at the moment generating function for x bar and this vector. And we're going to do that by... And well, our goal is to show that they're independent, but we're going to do that using moment generating functions for this uh, vector, x bar and uh, w. So let's look at the expected value of, and then you you take the, the, the vector, and I broke it up into s times this and then all the components of w. And let's write this out, write it in summation notation. So this is x bar. And this piece is over here. And then remember earlier I said there's steps that we took. And I'm going to reuse them. So that's what goes from here to here, right? This just comes down. But this, if we look at the previous steps, we get this. This can be broken up into, or into one sum, which is this. But this is the moment generating function definition for or a normal random variable, which is this. And so this, since this is normal, we can, we get, uh, for x, we get mu, we put this term here, we get sigma squared over two, we put that squared. And since this is the product of that, and there's an index in here, we have to, we, it ends up that we sum these. So this is this piece here, and then this piece gets summed. And then we take the sum into each of these, and then this goes to zero. This one comes down, right? There's no index. We get n of them. The n's cancel. We're left with this. Here, uh, sigma squared comes down. When you when you square this term and then sum the four terms, or three if you combine them, uh, the, the cross products cancel. And we're left with this. And we're left with this. And then multiply that goes in, and we're left with this. Um, this piece right here, let's just write it as e to the this term here. And over here, let's write it e to the this term. Well, those were the exact moment generating functions for the, the mean, sample mean, and that vector. And so since we can take the joint moment generating function and write it as the product of the marginals, that says they're independent. So x bar and this vector w are independent. Okay. Now we're almost finished. So now we want to show that x bar and our sample variants are independently distributed. And the proof follows instantly. 
because since s squared is a function of this vector, right? You have to use this vector to drive the variance. And functions of independent random variables are independent. So s squared, since it's a function of w, is independent of x bar. And we're done. Now, I'm going to point you to a couple or three relevant videos that may interest you, and then I'm going to call her quits because we're right at 10 minutes. Sample mean and variance are independent if data are normal. So that's a video I have here. I use uh, matrix notation to prove that in this video. In this uh, using R video, we I illustrate that the sample mean and variance are independent graphically. It's kind of a cool video and then here's an article from Kruskal that proves the joint density for the sample mean and the sample variance are independent and that's kind of a cool little proof all right well that's all I have for this video and uh, hope you enjoyed it I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye